Yeah, uh, Nimish, Nimisha Mataji, can you allow screen sharing? I think it's been disabled, so you may. Okay, um, I'll do that. For Guru Maharaj, anyway, if, if you're able to, otherwise I can help you. I'm just reading through it. Just give me one second. Yeah. Uh, if I assign as co-host to Maharaj, then Maharaj can do it, can can he? Yes, yes, that's that's another way to do it, yes. All right, okay. Yeah. You okay, Maharaj, you are now co-host. Please try, Maharaj. Try uh, what? Share screen? Yeah, there should be an option um, on your screen somewhere which says share content. Yeah, well, I can see the green arrow. So you hit yes. Mm -hmm. so when you're ready, you can press that button so much. When I hit ready, then I hit the share button. Uh, you need to, yeah, and then bring up your PowerPoint slide first, then hit the share button. Okay. Uh, yeah, it's actually come up, it came up on the window. It's okay. there. Yeah, so you just hit that share button when you're ready to share your screen. Okay, we'll start Omagyan Timiranda Syagina Jana Salakaya Chaksu Militam Yena Tasma Shri Guru Veda Maha Shri Chaitanya Mano Vistam Stapti Tam Yena Bhutale Swayam Rupa Kadam Mayam Dadati Swampadati Kam Maum Vishnu Padaya Krishna Prestaya Bhutale Srimakti Bhakti Vedanta Swami Itinamine Namaste, Saraswati Deve, Gorbani Pachari, Nainir Vishesa, Sunya Vadi, Pastyat Yadeya Satari, Nay. Panchakalpa Tirubhischa, Kripa Sindhu Pe, Vaja, Patita Nam Pavane Bhyo, Vaishnave Bhyo Namaho Namaha, Jai Sri Krishna Chaitanya Prabhu Nityananda, Sri Advaita Gadadhar Sivasadi Gora Bhaktarinda, Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare, Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Hare Hare. So welcome to all the devotees. Um, today is the official beginning of a one-week emphasis as to help uh, us understand more deeply uh, and to also explore the area of uh, reading and studying Srila Prabhupada's books. Um, I think the most important part of that is to understand or to hear from Srila Prabhupada himself on the importance of studying his books. And so today's presentation is a... Uh, it's going to be a series of presentations over the next few days on a PowerPoint presentation uh, on the importance of reading and studying Srila Prabhupada's books. In order to facilitate this presentation, we will be putting the slides up on the screen for each and every person to view. So you can read along as I explain the different uh, slides, but there will be uh, a point where I'll ask uh, the general audience of devotees to read one of the slides. And uh, this is a very, this is meant to be very interactive because each of the slides has certain points that can be discussed and should be discussed in order to bring out the greater meaning. For the first 12 uh, slides, it's more like setting the stage for the rest of the slides. There are 95 slides in the whole presentation. So we won't do it all today. We'll try to do everything in about three to four days, maybe four days. It's not about trying to finish this presentation, but more like trying to go up deeper. So I'm about to put the uh, slideshow up on the screen for everyone. And uh, then we need to hear whether it's visible or not. And 
So, uh, through March. Yeah, we can see your slides. Yes. Huh? We can see your slides. That's perfect. Okay. Can you see that? Yeah. Yes. How perfect. and why it is more important. Is to study it? Okay, good. That's the first slide. So, um, if, so I'll be reading for a while and then I'm going to ask the devotees to read or to respond to some questions that I present. So be alert. This is important. This slide presentation is quite expertly put together. It's not my uh, work. It's something that's done by my god sister. Uh, Lakshmi Moni. Uh, she spent a lot of time developing it, and I've been presenting it in different places over the last two to three years. So um, we'll begin. <clears throat> and the title is important now more than ever. Now, how is it? How and why is it more important? to study Srila Prabhupada's books more deeply now, more, more than ever before. Mm -hmm. So there is a, a kind of a point that now it's even more important than it was in the past. Okay. Then here we have four generations of devotees. <clears throat> Srila Prabhupada, his direct disciples, Disciples of his disciples, that's most of you, and disciples of the disciples of his disciples, four generations. <clears throat> Here, we have four kind of categories to consider. What are the issues that Prabhupada spoke on? What are the instructions that he gave to solve the issue? In what context are these instructions been placed? and how they relate to the particular situation and the intention or the goal which Prabhupada was trying to achieve in giving that particular instruction. So remember these four things, issues, instructions, context, and intention. Next, we have, uh, <clears throat> we have uh, our typical New devotee there, you can see him. He's dressed very nicely. <laughs> he, we have issues that are going on. <clears throat> the initiation issues, the shiksha issue, one ashram preaching, the woman's uh, guru issue. There's so many issues that are being faced in our society, okay? The instructions. Now, Prabhupada left everything. We can see his lectures, his conversations with others, his letters to devotees and others, and his personal instructions to devotees and others. So these are the five categories you can see might consider them in order of importance also. And then, what was the context that these instructions came, the time, the place, the circumstances, who was it about, when was it given, what was the context, what was the place, what was the media by which it was shared through phones, through internet, through letters, through personal contact. Okay, so we're getting a little bit of a broad idea. Okay, then the intention. What was the intention? It was given the instruction. What was the mood? It was given. And what was the desired purpose? Okay, everyone's following. And then, this is important to understand here, um, we have uh, 
we say issues, instructions, context, and intention. A lot with the different generations. So here's just the point that is being made in reference to the title. That the first generation, that means those were there with Prabhupada, the issues are clear, the issues are clear, the instructions are clear, the context was given, is known, the intention that it was given was also known. As, as the next generation comes in, we see that the, the intention somehow fades because of time. Now this is all due to the gradual change in generations. So you'll see, as you look down the list, the issues remain strong, the instructions start to fade as the generations continue. The context fades even more and is lost in the fourth generation. And the intention is uh, hardly visible except in the first generation. So um, these, we're gonna deal with how to prevent this from happening but this is the general trend, trend as time goes on. The instructions, the context, the intentions become less and less uh, understood and available. Uh, some issues, marriages and divorces, uh, addiction initiation for women, relationships between the GBC and the temple presidents. Okay, now this kind of like explains the chart from the second generation. Uh, the intention is missing or fading. It must be reconstructed by knowing the instructions and finding out the context in which it was given. If these arguments if these are unclear, it can a different understandings get stifled and confused. So Prabhupada's instructions in his books, his letters must be kept alive through a system of reconstruction and making these things alive. Not just by reading his book, but we'll go into some of the ways by which we can keep Prabhupada's uh, four principles, the instructions, the intention, the context, and the um, intention alive. Okay, third generation. And this sort of patterns the chart in terms of explanation. Context is missing. Things must be reconstructed by memories from those who associated with, because you weren't here with what, what Prabhupada said and did, you're hearing about Prabhupada through his associate, uh, the, his, his disciples who had direct association. And then the fourth generation, uh, things start to really fade. And then by a relevant system of education, and careful study of those instructions, then things can start to become clear again in terms of these four, four categories. So uh, be prepared. I can't really call on anybody because I can't see anybody. But the first one that starts reading, please read. So here you go. Somebody read. Prabhupada comments, all the devotees connected with the Krishna Consciousness Movement must read all the books that have been translated, the Chaitanya Charitamrita, Srimad Bhagavatam, Bhagavad Gita and others. Otherwise, after some time, they will simply eat, sleep and fall down from their position. Thus, they will miss the opportunity to attain an eternal blissful life of transcendental pleasure. Repose. From uh, read the reference also. From Chaitanya Charitamrita, Madhya Lila, 
Can you see that? Chapter 25, verse 278. I can only see the chapter. Okay. okay, so here, okay, uh, there seems to be something in the way here. Um, let me see if I can, uh, yeah, okay. It's, yeah, it needs to go up a little bit. Then you can see Madhya Leela chapter 25 there. Okay. So what Prabhupada is saying, and this is a verse from the Madhya Leela Chaitanya Charitamrita. Prabhupada is emphasizing the point that if we don't, then uh, the mind and the intelligence will become uh, what we say, either diverted away from philosophical understandings of both the practice and the, and the tattva, the truth of the, 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 the knowledge of how it's presented. And after some time, the bodily activities of life will become more prominent again. And Prabhupada ends saying this, this will cause one to miss the opportunity of eternal blissful life of transcendental pleasure. So this is a very powerful uh, verse, and the Srila Prabhupada's purport is also uh, expands on these points here. So Prabhupada said, yeah, Chaitanya Charitamrita, Srimad Bhagavatam, Bhagavad Gita, and other books that he gave us. So this is one point here. Um, any comments from anybody on this, this particular statement? Questions? If there's none, we'll go to the next one. Someone else get ready to read. Okay. You must all study very scrutinically all of the books so that we the need arises you can repeat in your own words their purport as much as possible read chant and preach this is our life and soul if we keep to this simple formula then there is no doubt that we will be victorious wherever we go and very soon we will become the only religion in the world mm -hmm. yeah. so let letter to redainada maharaj so yeah, Prabhupada said, not only read, but study the books scrutinizingly. That means in great depth. So that you can actually come to the point of repeating what you read and understanding it, where you can repeat it in your own words. It's, it's nice to memorize things, but when you repeat it in your own words, then you actually start to realize what you're, what you're saying. And then Prabhupada said, this simple formula will make us victorious wherever we go. So he, Prabhupada wanted each and every devotee to read, study, and then whenever the opportunity, as he says here, arises, if you meet somebody on the street, or if you're asked to give a class, or someone asks you a question, then um, you should be ready to present this and uh, Therefore, he wanted the devotees to be very much uh, clear and fixed in our philosophical teachings. And then he said, we'll become the only religion in the world because we actually have a solid philosophical philosophy where many of the other religious systems are mostly based on faith and prayer, which is nice, but as Prabhupada writes in... Uh, in the Bhagavad Gita, the Bhagavad Gita, uh, religion without philosophy is simply sentiment or fanaticism, and philosophy without religion is simply mental speculation. So we need to combine both religious activities with philosophical understanding. Any questions regarding this particular statement?
Okay, so we'll go to the next. Okay, someone else read. If you want to stay in Krishna consciousness, you will have to develop firm faith in Guru and Shastra. Therefore, you must study my books very scrutinizingly, follow the four regulative principles very strictly, and chant 16 rounds daily, avoiding the 10 offenses. Oh. Don't take this movement as something cheap. Srila Prabhupada to Shruta Devadas, 30th October, 1976. Again, Prabhupada uses that word scrutinizingly, kind of an interesting word. But he wants to make a point that threadbare to the essence. And having this knowledge through that study, and then we'll get into the whole process of study. That, that's part of the presentation. Then he says, follow strictly these four regulative principles and chant 16 rounds. By following the four regulative principles, one becomes purified from all reactions of all sinful activities, doesn't commit any more sinful activities, and by chanting the 16 rounds, carefully avoiding the offenses, uh, these three principles combined are the essence of our uh, advancement in Krishna consciousness. Okay, anything? And he says you have to develop faith in Guru and Shastra. Why would we study the books if we don't have faith in the author of the books? And at the same time, Shastra, which is coming from Krishna through Guru. Okay, okay so, and then Prabhupada said, if you want to stay in Krishna consciousness, many people come and many people go. To stay, in the, one has to have a foundation in order to develop from, and that foundation is mentioned here. Clear understanding of the philosophy and the ability to explain. Uh, carefully reading and uh, strictly following these regulative principles, no illicit sex, no intoxication, no meat eating and no gambling which are the pillars of all sinful activities, and uh, chant 16 rounds on beads. Mm -hmm. So he kind of sums it up in this one letter. Any questions regarding that? Hare Krishna Maharaj, Mahambala Basin says, all glory to Shri Prabhupada, all glory to yourself. Okay. Um, my question is, Maharaj, you mentioned that when devotees leave, um, my question is, is it up to us then to chase up why they've left or shall we leave them at their own discretion and not interfere? There's a fine line here, whether you pry or not, why they've left. Well, the first, first you have to see how, how much they're actually in. When Prabhupada says, they, you know, if you want to stay in Krishna consciousness, that means persons who are chanting 16 rounds, who are initiated, who are following the four regular principles, then for some reason, they uh, become less serious and start to drift away. Anybody can come to a meeting and chant and read. That doesn't necessarily mean that they're actually, they're just maybe just curious or want to have good association want to do something spiritual. He's talking about people who are actually in the movement, who are already following like that. So based on that distinction, um, yes, with regards to those who are been seriously in practice and then somehow fall away, there should be some attempt to uh, find ways to again attract them back and that's a whole discussion how you would go about it but yeah but if you see someone's coming to a meeting for a while and chanting and reading and then they stop coming you can always give them a call and say oh, we miss your association yeah. 
That's just, that's just human nature. Thank you, Marsh. Okay, so let's see here. Next one, someone else read. Therefore, I recommend you to read books more and more and try to understand the subject matter from different angles of vision and be always discussing it with your God brothers. And when you are working and you cannot read, then listen to the tapes of my lectures and hear in that way. And never neglect to chant your 16 rounds of beads daily. Rise early without fail, attend Mangala Arti, take bath and follow the other regulative principles and everything will come out very successfully. You can rest assured of that. Okay. Well, that's a general statement, although it's given in the form of a letter to Bhargava. It's a general statement that if we follow this, everything will come out successfully. So Prabhupada is giving us, even he said, if you cannot read, you can listen to my tapes. So we can always do that wherever we are. And then he gives the basic principles. For those of you who live at home with family, you can arrange Mangal Archie at your home. If you can't attend the temples like that, have a little, bring the family members together in the morning and do a little kirtan and chant the Mangal Arati prayers like that. Then in, of course, in the very beginning, he says, uh, read more and more. And then, Bodhiyantas parasparam katiyantas chimam mityam nishtushanti cha ramanti cha. Discuss it from angles of vision. Always discuss it with your God brothers, your God sisters, with people in general, or with your family members. Have a little reading group, study group, talk about Prabhupada's books, find sections in the, in the books that are interesting and, uh, you know, deeply philosophical and create a little sangha where someone reads Others pinpoint some of the points and discuss. And that way you'll always be uh, successful in Krishna consciousness. We're, we shouldn't be satisfied enough to just get up in the morning, chant our rounds, and go about the, the routine activities of our day. That's not enough. You'll never be able to really taste the happiness in Krishna consciousness unless you understand how this process is very, very deep in the principles of spirituality, philosophy, uh, aesthetic and moral values, uh, and even in some of the ordinary activities of the world and how that relates to one's practice in spiritual life. Prabhupada's books, his lectures, his conversations, his letters, instructions are all can cover so many areas. Okay. Any comments or questions on this? Particular statement. Okay, next, someone else read. In my books, the philosophy of Krishna consciousness is explained fully. So if there is anything which you do not understand, then you simply have to read again and again. By reading daily, the knowledge will be revealed to you. And by this process, your spiritual life will develop. This is very interesting. We may not be able to understand on our first reading, but there's a certain element of knowledge that comes, that is revealed through the point of repetition. When Srila Prabhupada presented Bhakti Siddhanta's uh, commentary on the Shri, uh, on the Brahma Samhita, the devotees were having a hard time understanding Bhakti Siddhanta Saraswati's commentaries. And so they asked Srila Prabhupada if he would write 
an explanation on the commentaries. Prabhupada said, no, you just read it over and over and over again. And this, and then gradually this knowledge will become more and more clear. And this is true in any aspect of the philosophy. If you continue to read it and think about what you're reading, you'll find that each time you do and think about it, you get more and more ideas of what is being said. It's just a feature of spiritual knowledge. It takes repetition to really penetrate the meanings. This is a very important point. Any questions on this? Any statements regarding this? Has anybody had an experience of like this? Hare Krishna Guru Maharaj. Yes, I, I certainly have. I, I always struggle with the slokas and the Sanskrit. So I just used to read the English purports over and over again. And then slowly I got some inspiration to read the slokas and so on. So certainly for me, it was, I struggled with the Sanskrit initially. Yeah, it's just a matter of application. <clears throat> It's like going to school and you have to learn a subject matter. The more you, gi you give it the material attention and the intellectual, uh, what we say, uh, understanding, in other words, looking at it from different angles, you start to see the different points that are being presented. I also found that discussing it with other senior devotees, they'll give you insights hints and tips, ideas of how to approach a particular chapter or even summarize it for you to help you get that context. Yeah, that's another, that's the easy way. Just go to those who know, <laughs> simply ask. I'm always looking for easy ways. Hare Krishna Guru Maharaj, yes, um, I think uh, I have the same kind of situation um, as I don't remember um, things very well. So um, not only um, reading again and again, but also um, um, helps me to write it down and then go back into it and then uh, read it again. And also um, kind of we have a group reading group. So we have some senior devotees um, in the group. So. Um, it's quite nice and very fortunate that um, we can always go back to them and and if um, uh, any kind of um, help we need with the reading and or understanding, um, they they always help us too. So yeah, I think writing it down, uh, the points and go back into again, that really helps me. To yeah, that, is stim that stimulates nice discussion amongst the devotees. You bring your questions, you bring your points of realization to the group, they discuss, and then you find you, you even find so much more even beyond the, the initial point of discussion. Spiritual knowledge is dynamic. Uh, material knowledge is more like information, therefore it's not knowledge, and therefore it's more static. Static means limited. Uh, dynamic means it's, it can unlimitedly reveal more and more of the meaning as one starts to go deeper to try to understand. And this is brought out by discussions. And discussions in point. And we're going to uh, talk about that in some of the later slides. Okay. So the next one. Yesya Devi Para Bhakti Yata Devi Tata Guru one who has got unflinching faith in the Supreme Lord and similar faith in the spiritual master, to him only the imports of Vedic knowledge becomes revealed. This is a very, very significant verse that, that faith 
which is unflinching. Unflinching means not broken under any conditions. And both Krishna and the spiritual master and acts according to these this level of faith, then that knowledge which is there in the Vedas becomes revealed easily as soon as we become in contact with it. In other words, it's not a matter of trying to really study hard. It comes automatically through this complete faith in Guru and Krishna. Very powerful. Uh, verse, this is from the Sweta Swatara Upanishads, I think it's 6.8. Okay, so any questions regarding this statement? Hare Krishna Maharaj, please accept my humble obeisance as all glorious Lord, all glorious Jee Maharaj. I just wanted to ask how one can develop unflinching faith um, in a Supreme Lord, like we live in material conditions and so many times it happens, we are not sure what will happen, what will happen. How can one develop faith basically? Well, the faith comes by understanding the, the uh, place where you're putting your faith. So you're putting your faith in Guru and Krishna. So you have to understand what is the nature of Krishna and how he interacts with his devotees. You, the more you learn about Krishna and the more you understand his position of complete supremacy and complete uh, control, then it becomes easy. Putting faith in something material means something is always changing and therefore your faith is, uh, will be uh, damaged because of the changing. But Krishna is the same but we have to connect with that understanding by hearing about Krishna, by serving Krishna, by worshiping Krishna, developing a relationship with Krishna, and seeing others who are in a similar position and how their faith has developed. All this supports and solidifies our own faith. And of course, the spiritual master there. So the spiritual master has to be uh, what we say, what's the word? We have to uh, question the spiritual master before we get initiated. Questions, questions, questions to actually understand that this is my spiritual master. When all questions are answered and then initiation is given, then that faith is there. If it's not there after initiation, that means you didn't take enough time prior to establish that faith. And that's important. That's not only important, that's essential. In order to keep that relationship, uh, to continue the relationship and to make the relationship become more and more uh, deeper. So, uh, yeah. It's all about knowledge and about association. Thank you, Maharaj. Thank you. That was a very good answer. Thank you so much. Thank you. Okay, so next. So here, three kinds of studies. What do we see here? What Can somebody read those three kinds of studies? Hare Krishna Maharaj. So it's a personal study, first study. Um, so it seems like it's just a studies of Srila Prabhupada's books, reading them and thinking about what's been read. And then it's a group study. So then it's sanghas or uh, discussions with senior devotees. And then systematic group study, which um, to me looks like taking on the courses, Maharaj. Exactly taking courses, seminars, like that. So these are three ways to study. Personal, group, and systematic. Okay. Uh, prayerful reading, a good system for personal study. Someone can read? Prayerful reading, a good system for personal study. Prayerful reading, more an attempt to allow Shastra to affect us, gain association, carefully listen to Krishna's message, 
let potent transcendental words sink deeply into the core of our consciousness. Okay, so this this illustration here kind of gives you a little bit of an idea of what it means. He's reading in a thoughtful way. Let the message sink in, let it go deeper into your consciousness. Okay, so, and the next one, you'll see all alone by the shore, absorbed in the book. <laughs> okay, next one. Someone read? When, when you're reading? Go ahead, please. No, Mataji, I already read. You read it. It's fine. Okay. When reading is in this fashion, one doesn't attempt to read a specific quantity. That goal is suppressed by a desire for depth of purification through associating with Srila Prabhupada, our Acharyas, and Sri Krishna, the Supreme Personality of Godhead. Even a small step toward such a lofty goal requires a correct attitude when approaching the book. Yeah. That goal is superseded by a desire for depth of purification. So we want, not only we want to read, we want to become purified by this reading. So he, what is this, this statement is more or less trying to help us understand a proper attitude when approaching the books. It's not a matter of uh, quantity, it's a matter of what do you want to gain from this reading. Okay. Okay, next one. So there is not there is nothing to be said new. Whatever I have to speak, I have spoken in my books. Now you try to understand it and continue your endeavor. I shall never die. I shall live forever in my books. May 1977. This Bhagavad Purana is as brilliant as the sun. It has arisen just after the departure of Lord Krishna to his own abode accompanied by knowledge, religion, knowledge, etc. Persons who have lost their vision due to the dense darkness of ignorance in the age of Kali shall get light from this Purana. Srimad Bhagavatam 1.2.43 Yeah, so this is giving us a little understanding of the importance of Srimad Bhagavatam or not the importance, the prime position, the superior and exalted and top position of Srimad Bhagavatam, Prabhupada said, everything I've given you, it's in my books. There's nothing, uh, you know, that I didn't speak. It's all in my books. And even though I may not be physical plant present, I'm still present in my books. I live forever through my books. I, I never die because I, it, I am personally present in my books. So now, this is a very deep understanding of of the importance of Shastra. Not only do you get the knowledge from the Shastra, but you also get the personal association of Srila Prabhupada when you carefully and seriously read. And then the glorification of Bhagavad Purana from the Bhagavad Purana itself. Krishna left the planet, but Krishna is merciful. He left himself in the form of Srimad Bhagavatam. So Bhagavatam says that people that are lost in this age of Kali, here's where you find a light. Now this, this statement alone, we could give a whole seminar on explaining the glories of Srimad Bhagavatam. But the essence is given to us in this very statement here. The person who gave us the Bhagavad, the pure devotee spiritual master, Srila Prabhupada, 
and the knowledge of the absolute truth in its uh, most clear and most uh, complete way is given to us in this great scripture called Srimad Bhagavatam. Mm -hmm. Okay, any comments on that? <laughs> And if you note the date, May 7, 1977, that's only, that's only six months before Srila Prabhupada departed. He made that statement. Okay. There's something visual here. Seems like we can't get the next slide up. So we'll, something is stuck here. Mm -hmm. Okay, here we go. A little visual message. Absorbed reading. Okay, so now what you're gonna see next for the next three slides or suggested steps when beginning to practice prayerful reading. So we're talking about reading in a prayerful mood. So someone read the first three. There are nine, there are 10 points here. Just steps when beginning to practice prayerful reading. Decide on what you will read to decide how long you will read for. It's, it's up to you. And third, Go to a place where you can be alone with the book, uninterrupted and quiet. Decide what you're going to read, how long, it's up to you. You decide. Go to a place where you can be fully absorbed without interruption. Three first three steps, okay. The next two steps. Number four, make yourself comfortable, but don't fall asleep. Number five, cultivate an appropriate attitude. Okay, getting comfortable is nice, but too comfortable means you get sleepy. Make, cultivate the appropriate attitude. We talked about that already. Read with the idea to understand Okay, the next three steps. Uh, before starting, you may offer prayers. Uh, seven, when you are ready, begin reading. Read aloud or silently. Number eight, read until a word a phrase or an idea strikes you or catches your attention. Strive to understand it deeply. Mm -hmm. You offer prayers to the Bhagavatam or to whatever scripture. Read, you can either read aloud or silently, whatever works best for you. I find that if we're a little sleepy, reading loud, aloud keeps you awake. Otherwise, I generally read silently because I find it's more easier to absorb. And, uh, and then... If something, as you're reading along, something catches your attention, go back over it, think about it, read it again, try to understand it. Okay, any questions regarding those? Hare Krishna Maharaj, I just have a small question about uh, offering prayers. Uh, so uh, when we read, for example, Chaitan Charitamrita and uh, Srimad Bhagavatam, uh, we normally have the defined shlokas, which, which we get uh, normally used to of just reciting the shlokas. And uh, it doesn't sink in as a offering prayers or um, putting maybe a focus on the shlokas or the meaning of it. So is there any specific prayers? Yeah. We're going to come to four prayers by Sanatana Goswami glorifying Srimad Bhagavatam, which personally I read every day when I begin my Ragatam reading. Um, 
And then, of course, within there is also prayers that are recommended. Nasta Prayeshu Abhijayashin Nityam Bhagavata Segvaya Bhagavati Uttama Sloke Bhakti Bhavati Naista Ki. That's from the Bhagavatam itself. That's uh, so in the Bhagavatam or in other places, there are prayers that are recommended to bring our consciousness into the right mood before reading. So um, uh, I'll give you a few, but many others you have, you may have to search out. That's okay. Fine, Maharaj. Thank you so much. Okay. And number nine and 10. Nine, when your time is up, offer obeisances and try to uh, any realizations uh, that may have been offered to you. Number 10, assimilate into your life what you have read and realized. Read Srila Prabhupada's books in this fashion as much as you can. Okay. So, time's up. Don't just put the book away, offer obeisances. Try to remember what you, any realizations you had. You may also be able to write those down while you're reading. Um, then you can see, what did I read? What did I learn? How can I use it in my practice of Krishna consciousness? Like that. So these are more, this is, this is active reading instead of passive reading. Active reading brings about... Uh, awareness of the, the, how the philosophy can be applied. Any questions on these last two? Okay, so now uh, we're going to end with these next few slokas, which are prayers to the Srimad Bhagavatam. So, um, let's see. This, these are two of the prayers and then the translations. Okay, so the next sloka. Someone read, this is by Sanatan Goswami. These are prayers to the Srimad Bhagavatam. O Srimad Bhagavatam, O nectar churned from the ocean of all the Vedic scriptures, O most prominent transcendental fruit of all the Vedas, O you who are enriched with the jewels of all spiritual philosophical conclusions, O you who grant spiritual vision to all the people of the world. O oh, life breath of the Vaishnav devotees, O oh Lord, you are the sun which has arisen to dispel the darkness of Kaliyu. You are actually Lord Krishna who has returned among us. Mm, wonderful. Next one. Continue, Sri Devi. O Srimad Bhagavatam, I offer respectful obeisances unto you. By reading you, one attains transcendental bliss, for your syllables rain pure love of God upon the reader. You are always to be served by everyone, for you are an incarnation of Lord Krishna. Continue. O Srimad Bhagavatam, O oh, my only friend, O oh, my companion, O oh, my teacher, O oh, my great wealth, O oh, my deliverer, O oh, my good fortune, O oh, my bliss, I offer respectful obeisances unto you. Last one. O oh, Srimad Bhagavatam, O oh, giver of saintliness to the unsaintly, O oh, uplifter of the very fallen, please don't ever leave me. Please become manifest in my heart and my throat accompanied by pure love of Krishna. Okay, so these are four really powerful prayers offered in, with such devotion to Srimad Bhagavatam by the, the, one of the senior of all the Goswamis, Srila Sanatana Goswami. So uh, we'll make these prayers available to the devotees so uh, you can have 
a copy of them and you can also use them in before you read. You may also read them at the end after you read Srimad Bhagavatam like that. So you can see how much love he has for Bhagavatam and how much he glorifies Bhagavatam as the best of all scriptures. Okay, so for today, we'll end here, and then we'll go tomorrow to slide number 34, and uh, we'll continue. It gets more and more interesting and more and more in-depth. Um, and so well, we were just trying to give a little clear understanding of the, the, the magnitude that these books cover and the importance that they have in our life, especially in our practice of pure devotional service. And how we can take advantage of them. Okay, so any, any concluding questions or comments? So I'll stop the slideshow and come back to the actual screen. Okay. Hey Krishna Maharaj, my humble obeisances to you. I really appreciated the quotes, um, the, the first few quotes that you showed uh, about the importance of following the regulative principles, chanting the 16 rounds, and uh, reading Crawford's books. And I also appreciated, like, you know, the four, with the four generations, like how the intention um, could be lost if, if that's not done carefully. So, yes, it's that's very true. Yes, a significant point. And this is, this is a historical phenomenon that uh, this um, just like we have the we have the example of uh, the Sri Sampradaya and the Madhva Sampradaya who are very much focused on uh, reading their founder Acharya's works and studying it. So they make that a regular practice as part of their all of their programs. And that's why they, they're, these Sampradayas are actually very strong in their practice, Sri Sampradaya, coming out of uh, uh, the area of Raghunath Temple and Madhvi Sampradaya coming out of the area of Udupi. Udupi. So, uh, yeah, for us, it's the same principle. We need to keep everything alive and also understand what supports our understanding of the philosophy is the practice that is given, and that is the chanting of the holy names and the following of the four restrictions. Okay. Thank you. Thank you for that, uh, that uh, explanation. Appreciation. That was wonderful. Yes, Maharaj. Thank you very much. Actually, we can, um, I mean, those uh, four um, quotes were so true. Like, I, I could see it in my own life as well as the life of devotees around me. Because when those are compromised, everything goes down very, very quickly. Mm -hmm. Yes. Everything goes, because that's, when you build a, a house, you, you, the strength of the house is based on the foundation you first construct. Well, there's, those are foundational and everything we build on top of that, and that is our devotional service. But the foundation is weak when the winds of Maya start blowing and the house crumbles. <laughs> Yes, Maharaj. Yeah, but I, I, you know, I, uh, I also, you know, um, see the good side of it is that if we just take to those practices again, like we can stand up again. Um, so, 
Yeah, that's true. It's not like it's lost. Hmm. But when we never go away, then progress is more direct and faster. Each time we fall away, we have to come back. We have to kind of start over and went and pick up from where we left off. Yes, Maharaj. Yeah. yeah. Reading and studying these books support the, the consciousness we need to stay fixed in our practice. And that's a, that's a feature that's really prominent because I see when my attacks, devotees sometimes get confused. They don't know what to do or how to act or how to think or how to uh, get out of the situation. But if you know the philosophy and you have a working understanding of how, how, how to apply it, then everything becomes clear. What's the solution? Mm -hmm. Yes, Maharaj. Yeah. So sometimes we don't have that understanding, but then that's the guidance of the devotees. That's when it, it becomes those who have that faith can give us back that faith that, you know, this process will work. Just continue. Yeah. Associating with faithful, you become faithful also. <laughs> okay. Thank you. Anyone else would like to make any closing questions or comments? Hare Krishna Guru Maharaj, please accept my humble obeisances. Our glories to Srila Prabhupada and our glories to you. Uh, I was really uh, struck by the power of uh, faith uh, in that quote. And I, I was uh, just thinking that uh, there are some certain situations when our faith is questioned. And uh, sometimes I, I have feelings of doubt and I try to solve it in an intellectual way, but it's not really possible. What can we do when our faith is questioned and it's difficult to, to maintain it in practice? Well, you'll find within the Vedic literatures, every situation that, every, that could possibly happen, there's an answer to it. You just have to search out the understanding that's first that's the first part what is the what is the philosophical or what is the knowledge i need um, the second thing is to understand how to apply it and that may also require help from others mm -hmm. and then as you try to apply it then you have to continue to understand how that application is working or not working and then to be able to adjust accordingly. So everything is there. There's nothing new under the sun. Mm -hmm. Nobody's problem is unique. <laughs> sometimes, <laughs> we, sometimes we think, oh my, my problem is so unique. It's not. <laughs> yeah, I think so. I, I was just uh, thinking uh, as you were speaking about this, that uh, that we, we really, really have to know the scripture to, to know uh, where to look for the answer. Yeah. Well, we can just ask where to look. Mm -hmm. But if we know, that's even better. Yeah. yeah. Uh, yes, because uh, previously, uh, uh, before being a devotee, I, I was a Christian, and uh, there was this... Uh, trend that uh, they uh, open up the Bible at a random place, <laughs> but uh, probably this doesn't really work. <laughs> it does work. Method. Really? <laughs> it's happened many times. Devotees have had problems and they just randomly open the book and they find the answer right where they open it. Mm. That requires complete dedication to, in other words, one is really desperate to get the knowledge and just opens it. Mm -hmm. Or someone will go to a class and that person will speak the answer. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's also interestingly, sometimes it works. Mm -hmm. It's Krishna behind the scenes. <laughs> <laughs> mm -hmm. 
It's based on sincerity. Thank you very much. Anything you want to know, it's available. Anything you want to know how to do, that knowledge is also available. It's good to know. <laughs> Thank you very much. Thank you. Any, anyone else? Any last comments or questions? Hare Krishna Guru Maharaj, please accept my humble obeisances. All glories to Srila Prabhupada, all glories to you, Her Holiness. Uh, Maharaj, one, one thing stuck for me in that, like, you know, uh, reading repeatedly again and again makes you think, you know, deeper understanding of what you are reading. That stuck me because, you know, with my personal experience also, whenever I read any of the Bhagavad Gita sloka and the purport, sometimes first time when I'm reading, the understanding is something different and I may not understood 100%. And then, when we have in our Bhakti Ruksha, like all the other devotees reading one, one you know, sloka of the same chapter and giving their realizations. After listening to that, if I go back and read what I had read, you know, it totally changes the perception and make more understanding. So thank you very much. That, that, that point is really, you know, stuck to me that, you know, even though first time I don't understand it, keep on going back and read. And every time you read, it will be a new perspective and you get something new out of uh, that understanding. Yeah. That's the nature of this literature. And the, that's the nature of how intelligence becomes receptive through repetition. Yes. Yeah. Good, good. I'll give, you, I'll give you a little bit of a, a challenge, <laughs> if you want. <laughs> if you can get a hold of uh, the Brahma Samhita, <laughs> by Bhakti Siddhanta Saraswati's comments, which is an ISKCON publication. Read that and see what you think. And then... Well, I give you a started, Maharaj. Actually, you know, we have a reading group, club group, and I think three weeks back, we started Brahma Samhita. And, you know, uh, and, and the first introduction itself, like the English, the way, <laughs> you know, Bhakti Siddhanta Saraswati Maharaj, the English itself is like, you know, we have to keep a dictionary aside because the Prabhuji who, you know, runs this class every week, he, he says, like, when you do your homework, keep a dictionary because some of the words, you know, Maharaj uses, you know, the, yeah. it's way beyond our, my understanding, Maharaj. At least. The materialistic demeanor cannot reach to the transcendental autocrat who is ever inspiring the fallen conditioned souls. And it goes on like that. Absolutely. Krishna is a transcendental autocrat. <laughs> And, and, and compare compared to that, Maharaj, like, you know, Prabhupada's purports and the language is very easy, Maharaj. It's like, you know, you can easily understand, you know, compared to Maharaj. So, yeah. Uh, yeah. We don't recommend you read all his books, but that one has been given yes, to yes, us. Yes, yes, so that one, yes, because it's such an important text. <laughs> yeah. That one you can really, it's good. It's good to do this because it sharpens your intellect. Yes, ma'am. It causes you to really think, and, and when you start doing it, sharper. Yes, Maharaj. Thank you, Maharaj. Hare Krishna. Thank you. Hare Krishna. Thank you, uh, Srinivas. Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna. Maharaj. Okay, so. I guess we'll uh, close here, and uh, tomorrow we'll continue. That was we did 33 slides, and there's 95 slides altogether, and so uh, it gets more intricate and more in depth. And you'll see, and it's also very very helpful in some of the upcoming slides on the importance of. Uh, how to approach the books and how to get the best from that approach. Okay, all glories to Srila Prabhupada. Hare Krishna. Thank you very much, Guru Maharaj. Hare Krishna. Hare Thank you very much, Guru Maharaj. Hare Krishna. Thank you very much, Guru Maharaj. Hare Krishna. Thank you so much. Hare Krishna, Guru Maharaj. Thank you so much. Thank you, Guru Maharaj. Hare Krishna. I appreciate this is truly very inspiring to read. So thank you so much for putting